Hey guys, today what we're going to talk about is how to write an equation for a trend line when you have a group of data in a scatter plot. Remember, our formula we're going to use for writing an equation is y equals mx plus b. Here's a picture of a scatter plot. We're going to go over with a line of best fit. We're going to go over a few pieces of information. It says basically what is a line of best fit. It's a line that refers to a trend in the data. It shows a positive or a negative correlation or sometimes there's no correlation at all in scatter plots. The line suggests a possible mathematical relationship between the two sets of data. So how is X and Y related is basically what we're looking at. So how to find your line of best fit. What you want to do is draw a line through the data on the scatter plot so that an equal number of points lie on both sides of the line. So the line we have right here, if you look at how many are above the line and then how many are below the line, it is equal. You want to try that as best you can. Then it says how to write the equation. First, you're going to identify two of the points on the line. So for this one, I would use this point and this point. I'm going to use the points to determine the slope of the line. Once I get my slope, I'm going to substitute in the values for one of the points in the equation. The equation, remember, is always in y equals mx plus b form. And then that's going to help me solve for b, which is my y-intercept. Write your equation in the form, again, it's already been said, but y equals mx plus b. We're going to look at one example today. So if you're in my class, we are not going to do the other example on the page with the definitions. Just reviewing back, remember that the equation is in y equals mx plus b form. The m is referencing the slope. The b is referencing y-intercept. Here's our table of data. Look on the graph time in minutes is on the x-axis, so these are our x values and these are our y values. Remember, our first step was to pick two points. The two points I'm going to pick to help me draw my line are, I'm going to pick this second dot right here, which is going to correspond with this pair. And then, but the second dot I'm going to choose is going to be this one, which corresponds with this first set. I'm going to try to draw a straight line and connect those two dots so that I'm going through the middle. You'll notice there's also an outlier in this group, this point right here. We're going to disregard it when we're um, looking at all of our points and don't worry about counting it when you're trying to get your line right through the center of the data. Okay, so I picked my two points. It said step one and draw my line. Number two, use the coordinates to help you find the exact slope. So I've made a little table right here, my X and Y coordinates. My first one I made in green, so I'm going to fill in. I can tell that's a little bit past 50 and a little bit past 100. So this is the only one that corresponds with that. So I'm going to put that in my first spot, 60 and 138. Then the second point I chose was this one, which was a little bit less than 150 and a little bit less than 300. So that's how I knew this one corresponds because there wasn't anything else matching like that. So those numbers would be 130 for my X, 289 for my Y. Another thing to think about real quick, <clears throat> when you look at the overall trend of this data, it's going in a positive direction. 
So that also tells me automatically that my slope is going to be a positive number. So if this happened to be multiple choice, I would eliminate anything that showed negative because the trend of this data is positive. Okay, now I want to take these ordered pairs and put them into my equation for finding slope y2 minus y1. So here's y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So I have 289 minus 138 over 130 minus 60. Type that in your calculator. You should get 150 over 70. We're going to go ahead and simplify that down, and it's going to be approximately 2.16. Okay, it's not exact. I rounded it, <clears throat> but it's 2.16. So this is going to be our slope when we get ready to build our equation. I'm going to scoot this box up a little bit so I have some more room. Then step three, it says use one of your ordered pairs from the table to help you find your y-intercept. I can look at my graph and I know it's above zero just a little bit, but not a whole lot. Okay, so that gives me some idea of where I'm gonna go. Remember my equation needs to be y equals mx plus b. Now I know m, the slope, is gonna be 2.16. So I'm gonna say y equals mx plus b. I know the slope now is 216, so I'm going to say y equals 2.16x plus b. Then choose one of the ordered pairs. I'm just going to choose 60 and 30 and 138. Okay. For x, I'm going to put in a 60 right here. And then for y, I'm going to put in 138 right there. And then I'm going to solve the equation. So instead of y, now I have 138 equals 2.16. But instead of x, I'm going to put 60 plus b. Okay, to solve this, I can go ahead and multiply these two numbers together. When you do, you get 129.6. I still have 138 on this side, I still have plus B. Now to solve, I would just subtract 129.6 from both sides. Scoot that up again, because I'm running out of space. After you subtract, you get 8.4, and that equals B. So now I know the Y-intercept I'm going to put those pieces of information together now to get the whole entire equation. Y equals 2.16X plus 8.4 because we just determined that that was our Y-intercept. So I would be looking for something close to 2.16 for my slope, positive, and something close to 8.4 if this was multiple choice.